fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I will still Judge Benwood's courtroom in San Antonio was packed with spectators who had attended the trial of a notorious outlaw leader, Juan Montez. The court attendant rapped for order as the judge entered and took his seat on the bench. Hear ye, hear ye, this court's now in session. Now quiet down, everybody, or the courtroom will be clear. There was a rustle of expectation as Judge Benwood spoke solemnly. The prisoner will rise to hear the sentence of this court. <laughs> Juan Montez, you've been found guilty on several counts of armed robbery and assault with intent to kill. You have led a gang of ruthless and vicious criminals who are still at large. The evidence against you was conclusive. And the jury, after due deliberation, has recommended that the court give you the maximum penalty. <clears throat> Juan Montez, this court hereby sentences you to 15 years in territorial prison. I warn you, Senor Judge. Remember what I say. I shall not be in prison long. And when I get out, this I swear, I will kill you, senor, and the masked man who captured me. Juan Montez will not rest until you, senor, and the Lone Ranger are dead! Late one afternoon, two months later, excitement broke out suddenly in territorial prison near San Antonio, Texas. Gordon, there's been a jailbreak. What? Juan Montez jumped a guard and got a gun. The other prisoners rioted and one escaped. Send me out to trail him. He mustn't get away. Yes, sir. Juan and a companion who had been waiting outside the prison rode hurriedly along the trail as the alarm whistle sounded behind them. Juan was saying... So far it has worked, Darcy. Is Louisa waiting with the carriage? Yeah, about two miles up the trail, Juan. You'll have to do some fast changing, but I think you can make it. Bueno. I don't savvy using the carriage to go into San Antonio, Juan. Why not just ride on with me, cover your trash, and get to the hideout where the gang is waiting? I have something very important to attend to in town first, Dusty. Very important. Is a gang waiting at the old hideout in the foothills? Yeah, got two new men, too. That makes ten of us all together. Fine, fine. 
Now you take charge until I get there, Dusty. Now we must hurry to reach the carriage. Andale! Get up! Within a short time, the two men stopped beside a black carriage waiting on the trail. Oh, 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 oh. Sit steady there. Juan, I am so glad to see you. It is good no one knows Luisa the Dancer is my sister. You have planned well. We, but time is short, Juan. Yeah. I shall wait here while you get into the carriage and change into the woman's clothes I have brought with me. The driver. He is to be trusted. Oh. Old Pedro is well paid. He sees nothing, hears nothing. Do not worry, but hurry, Juan. See. Inside the coach, Juan quickly put on the black dress and draped the black shawl about his head and face. Then he leaned from the coach window, saying, I'm ready, Luisa. Better change your voice if you talk to anyone, Juan. Oh, see, si, senor. I am the Senora Marina, no? <laughs> <laughs> that might get by. <laughs> but of course. Dusty, you continue along the trail now and cover your tracks. All right. We shall drive on right past the prison and go into San Antonio. I am sure they will not find Juan Montez now. Well, see you again soon, Juan. So long. Adios. Get up there. We are ready to drive on to San Antonio, Pedro. Si, senorita. A short distance from the prison, the carriage was stopped by three mounted guards. Stop that carriage, driver! Evening, ma'am. Buenos dias, senor. What is the trouble? A dangerous prisoner escaped from the prison. Oh. He was seen riding up the trail with another hombre. Easy, boy. Mind if I look inside your carriage? But not at all, senor. I am sure my traveling companion, senora Marina, is not the dangerous prisoner you are hunting. <laughs> oh, I reckon not, ma'am. Did you see a couple of riders back along the trail? Seems like you should have passed them. Oh, see, si, now I remember. There were two of them. They were riding so hard, we drew to one side and stopped to let them pass. Is it not so, senora? Oh, si, senorita. Keep the shawl closer about you, senora. You are catching a cold. I hope we have helped you, senor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thanks. We'll get right after him. One moment, senor. Oh, yes, sir? I am Luisa, the dancer. I shall be at the opera house in San Antonio... I do hope you and your friends will find the time to come to see my performance tonight or tomorrow night. Oh, sure, senorita. I've uh, seen posters telling about you. Uh, well, uh, we got to be going now. Goodbye. Adios, senor. Easy, steady, boy. Hey, let's go, man. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. <laughs> Very good one. You have fooled them. Now we shall drive into town and take rooms at the hotel. Drive on, Pedro. Handle it. When they reached town, Louisa engaged a small suite at the hotel. And no one suspected that the rather stout woman dressed in black who occupied the suite with her was the escaped convict Juan Montez. The following day, Tonto returned to the Lone Ranger's camp in the nearby hills after a trip to town for supplies. Oh, scout, no fella. Easy, scout, easy. Any news in town, Toto? Ah, big outlaw leader, Juan Montez, escaped from prison yesterday. Him not get caught. Oh, that is news. Them say him right way with other fella. Guards follow, but them lose trail. Them search all night, but not find him. All right, we'll stay in this territory a few days and try to get a line on him. He's a dangerous man. And him swear to kill judge who sent him to prison. And him swear to kill Lone Ranger. I'm not worried about that. And I'm sure the judge is safe enough. The sheriff will see that he's protected. Lawmen all watching for one, Montez. Him not dare go to town. Tonight I'll visit Judge Benwood and make certain he is protected. Of course, I'll use a disguise. Ah, it not good you go there wearing masks. That's right. Well, we'll do all we can to help recapture one, Montez. 
That evening, the Lone Ranger, without his mask and disguised as a rancher, rode to the judge's home. Oh, oh, easy, sleepy fellow. As he dismounted, a deputy moved from the nearby shadows with ready gun. You're covered, Mr. Reach. All right. Who are you? Why'd you come here? I came to see Judge Benwood. I'm his friend. I'll go to the door with you. I'll keep your hands raised. Let's go. Right. Judge, this hombre says he's a friend of yours. Good evening, Judge. Huh? Tonto and I were worried about you, so I came to make certain you were protected. You and Tonto? I, I... Oh, yes, yes, of course. Deputy, he is a friend. All right, Judge. Sorry, mister, but we got to be careful. I'm glad to see that you are. I'll be right outside, Judge. Yes, yes. Come in, sir. Oh, thanks. That voice was very familiar, and the, the moment you mentioned Tonto, I knew who you were. I disguised my features and came without my mask because it would have caused suspicion. Of course. I've heard about Juan Montez's escape. The sheriff immediately sent a deputy to stand guard, but I didn't think it was necessary. But Montez is a dangerous man, Judge. It's best to take precautions. Uh, he threatened your life, too. I know, but you're more vulnerable than I. You must watch your movements closely for a few days. I was to leave town tomorrow afternoon by stagecoach for New Braunfels. Well, that would be risky. Perhaps, but it's necessary that I be there to try a case. Then we'll try to make other arrangements for your trip. Juan Montez may have a spy in town, and we'll have to be careful. Mm, that's true. Now, if you'll give me a note to the sheriff, Judge, I'll go to his office and discuss arrangements with him. Very well. I'll be glad to, sir. I'll write a note at once. Then you can let me know what you and the sheriff decide. Later, the Lone Ranger entered the sheriff's office and presented the note of introduction. After reading it, the sheriff looked up with interest, saying, By thunder, mister, I've heard a lot about you, and I'm mighty pleased to meet you. I uh, realize from this note that you're using a disguise. Good thing you didn't ride to the judge's house wearing your mask. I thought of that. Judge Benwood told me about his trip tomorrow. It would be risky for him to ride the stage unless a large guard escorted it. Uh, that's right. Montez is smart. He might have someone watching here in town. I can't spare any men to escort the stage. Montez's gang is operating again and might decide to raid the town or something. They had 10 or 12 men riding in the recent holdups. My friend Todd and I would offer to escort it, but we'd be no match for Montez and his entire gang if they attack. It would be difficult to prevent them from gunning the judge. Yeah, that's right. Now, what's going on? There's men outside are yipping and yelling at the carriage going by. Belongs to a popular showgirl, a dancer named Louisa. Oh? <laughs> she appeared at the opera house last night and will be there again tonight. <laughs> According to the poster, she's due to appear in New Braunfels tomorrow night. I see. <laughs> Mighty pretty girl, and she sure can dance. Does she travel alone in that carriage? No, she came here at the female companion. I saw him getting out at the hotel. And the other woman is sure nothing to look at. Big as a house and dressed in black clothes. And had a black shawl over her head that partly covered her face. <laughs> but it was easy to see she was mighty homely. Hmm. Sheriff, I have an idea. Yeah? What? That dancer will be driving in her carriage tomorrow to New Braunfels with her companion. If she's willing, Judge Benwood could ride with them. See, you got something there. I'll see her at the theater tonight and ask her to take him as a special favor. Good. Have him get into the coach before it leaves the livery stable to call for the women at the hotel. He can crouch down out of sight until the carriage is out of town. By thunder, that's a great idea, mister. Juan Montez may be smart, but he'd never think of looking for Judge Benwood in the carriage of a showgirl. We'll get the judge safely to New Braunfels tomorrow after all. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Bell to continue. Not knowing that the man who threatened Judge Benwood's life would be riding in the same carriage, the Lone Ranger suggested that the sheriff arrange for the judge to go to New Braunfels with the dancer Louisa. The sheriff missed Louisa at the theater. Later, she and Juan sat in the parlor of the hotel suite when someone knocked at the door. Wait until I go into the other room, then see who it is. I'll be listening at the door. All right, Juan, but hurry. Well, the sheriff... And why do you come to see me, senor? <laughs> Even in the senorita. <laughs> I uh, came to ask uh, a favor. But first, I want to tell you how much I enjoyed the show. I'm glad to hear it, senor sheriff. Uh, won't you step inside? And now, senor, what is the favor you seek? Well, you see, Judge Benwood here in town has to go to New Braunfels tomorrow. For certain reasons, he can't ride the stage. Uh, would you be willing to take him in your carriage? Oh, I am sorry, senor, but that does not seem possible. You see, uh, I... Uh, listen, a certain hombre is out to gun the judge. I want to get him to New Braunfels secretly, you might say. I do not like to refuse, senor sheriff, but Louisa. I... Louisa? Louisa? Huh? Uh, who's that? Oh, senora Marina, my companion. She is suffering from such a terrible cold... Pardon me for a moment, senor. Uh, sure. It is the sheriff. I heard him. Tell him you'll take the judge. But one, the judge may find out you are not a woman. I'll risk it. I have my raisons. You'll sit between us and he doesn't have to hear me talk. Now go tell the sheriff you'll be glad to take the judge. Very well, Juan. Whatever you say. Is she all right? Si, senor. But her voice, it has become so husky. Uh, now about the judge. Well, if you can't take him, you can't, that's all. But I figured there were only two of you in the carriage oh, and... Uh... Very well, senor sheriff. How can I refuse one who is so persuasive? Uh, then you'll take him with you? Si, I am sure it will be all right. Well, thanks a lot. He'll get in at the livery stable and stay out of sight until you're out of town. I know the judge will appreciate it a lot. I'll go and tell him. Uh, thanks again. Good night. Good night, senor. The following morning, Judge Benwood sat well back in the carriage when it stopped to pick up Louisa and her companion so that he was unnoticed by others. A short time later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto watched from a cottonwood grove as the carriage left town on the trail to New Braunfels. There go carriage now, Kimasabi. Yes, we'll keep out of sight and follow it. Make sure it arrives in New Braunfels safely. Well, let's go. Come on, Get him up, scum. In the carriage, Louisa sat between her brother and the judge. They rode a few miles in silence. Then the judge spoke. Senorita, I uh, appreciate your kindness in allowing me to ride with you and your companion. But we are pleased to have your company, Senor Judge. See, si, we are most glad, Judge. As he spoke, Juan moved suddenly to the seat facing the judge. The outlaw held a gun menacing. What is this? You. You're not a woman. You should have been more observant before this, Senor Judge. See, si, I removed the shawl. What? Perhaps my face is familiar to you now, eh? Juan Montez. Juan, why have you done this? Because I have sworn to kill this man. Fate has delivered him into my hands. But Juan, you must not. That will be murder. That's right, murder. And you, senorita, will be arrested as an accomplice to the murder. But I did not know, senor. He is my brother, see. Si, and I have helped him escape from prison. But, but this I did not know. Do not worry, little sister. I shall not kill him in your carriage. Tell the driver to turn at the next branch trail to the left. You will leave us at the gang's hideout. Then you go on to New Braunfels. You will never know what has happened to the judge. Following at a distance so as not to attract attention, the Lone Ranger and Toto were surprised to see the carriage turn onto the branch trail ahead. Look, Kimosabe. Carriage take trail to left. That goes to Foothill. That's strange. And not get to New Braunfels by that trail. I know. Judge Benwood knows the way. That 
trail winds through the hills. By taking shortcuts, we can get ahead of the carriage and find out just what's going on. Monsieur! We must come. The masked man and Indian rode over the hills and before long rejoined the trail ahead of the carriage. Who's oh, 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 oh. The trail runs between boulders here, Toto. I'll stay on this side. You wait on the other side. Uh -huh. When the carriage comes along, we'll ride out suddenly on either side of the coach. If by chance there's nothing wrong, the judge will make excuses for us. Now, let's get set, Toto. Come, Scott. Come, fella. A short time later, the carriage came into view. The old Mexican driver didn't see the two horsemen until they suddenly rode from behind boulders on either side of the trail and swung in beside the carriage. Juan sighted the masked man. Come by, masked man. Hold it. Now I have the gun. You stop, Harry. Hold it. Hold it. Easy, Teddy. Big fella. Easy, Scott. Easy, fella. Thank heaven you came along. This is Juan Montez. I have him covered. Oh, I see. Disguised as the female companion of the dancer, Louisa. He is my brother, but I did not know he would do this. The girl helped him in his escape from prison, but I'm sure she didn't realize he meant to kill me. Of course, she'll be arrested for what she's done. Where were they taking you, Judge? To the gang's hideout. This trail leads to it. In that case, we go back to town. Put Juan, his sister, and the driver behind bars. Then get the sheriff and a posse to ride out to the hideout and capture that gang. Fine, fine. With one recaptured, there's no risk for me to take the stage for New Braunfels. I'll still have time to get to town before it leaves. That's right. Tano, we'll tie one on the driver. Then we'll head for San Antonio. Uh -huh. Later in town, Juan, Louisa, and the driver were put behind bars. Then a posse was formed, and with the sheriff, Tonto, and the Lone Ranger leading the way, started for the outlaw gang's hideout. After going some distance along the branch trail, Tonto called attention to a thin, barely discernible column of smoke rising from a hollow beyond the next hill. The sheriff called a halt. Oh, 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 oh. That faint column of smoke indicates the hideout shack like the Indian things. We better move careful. They're bound to have a guard watching the trail near the hideout. You're right, Sheriff. Sheriff, I suggest Tonto go ahead on foot to do some scouting. Not a good idea. Maybe me find guard, knock him out. Be fine if he can, Tonto. Ah, me go. And if we clear, me give signal. Easy, scout. Easy, brother. Adios. Adios, Tonto. Let's dismount, Sheriff. Yeah, Easy, Sheriff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tonto, moving in a direction parallel to the trail, kept to the woods and crept forward through the underbrush. He moved silently and cautiously and soon approached the place where the trail entered the hollow. He saw an outlaw guard sitting on a rock near the trail. The Indian circled so as to move up behind the man. And when he was about ten yards away, a crow with a loud cawing suddenly flew from a tree limb over his head. <coughs> Tonto dropped out of sight behind the brush as the guard looked around and stood up. Fella, look this way. Him know something frightened crow. Tonto crouched without moving as he peered through a small opening in the thick undergrowth. The guard stood a moment staring. Then, with gun ready, he started slowly forward. Oh, it's not good. Him suspicious. Come this way. The man was a ready target, but Tonto realized a shot would be heard by the outlaw gang in the shack and bring them on the run. He waited a few seconds, then crept forward until he was directly behind the man. He acted quickly. <laughs> And keep you quiet. Uh, knock him out. Back among the trees, the sheriff and posse were becoming impatient. Mister, seems like the Indians should have found out by this time if there's a guard near the hideout. Maybe the outlaw spotted him and took him prisoner. I doubt that, Sheriff. Tonto would have fired his gun to let us know he's in trouble. Well, maybe so, but if they grabbed him before... Yes, that's Tonto's signal. Let's move from here on foot and try to sneak up on them. Good idea. Let's go. Inside the hideout shack, the outlaw Dusty was speaking to his pals. Juan hoped a gun Judge Ben Wood in town, then come here to join us. I figured he might get the chance the first night, but I reckon he couldn't. I look <laughs> He sure looked funny dressed up like a female. <laughs> but he'd get by all right as long as he don't do much talking. I reckon he... Hey, I 
thought I saw someone moving in the brush just outside the window. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Drop your guns and reach, what? all of you. Hey, the sheriff out there. Oh, a oh, masked man shot through the hey, window. Oh, oh, back oh, at I men are at all the windows. If you don't want to get drilled, drop your guns and reach like I said. Oh. Juan Montez is already in jail. Hey, they got Juan. We don't have a chance. Better drop our guns. Some of you men keep them covered. The rest of you come in, pick up those guns, and tie up these crooks. Oh, that's it. Hey, Sheriff, here's some empty Wells Fargo money sacks back in the corner. Bring them as evidence. Right. This gang held up the Wells Fargo stage two weeks ago, I reckon. We'll get them to talk plenty once they get back in town. Yes, yeah, Sheriff, this sure is something. Because of that masked man and engine, we got not only Juan Montez, but his entire gang. Every last one of them we got. When you introduced them to the posse, you just said they were friends and could be trusted. You didn't see who that masked man is. Well, where did he go? Where's the Indian? He just left to get their horses, I reckon. Yeah. That means we won't see him again. Most likely going to hit the trail to hunt for more trouble. He sure is a lawman's friend. That masked man is known far and wide out here in the West as the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Well, doggone. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendell, produced by Trendell Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's drama was written by Dan Beatty and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger.